God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Because God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. As I told you in the beginning of the Mass, the Church today changed her color, not because I look good in pink, it's because today the Church celebrate, rejoice. Gaudete Jerusalem, rejoice, O Jerusalem. Why she is going to rejoice? As we read in the first reading, the chosen people of God, due to their sinfulness of idolatry, throw themselves in front of foreign gods, alienating the covenant, they were forced, because of their choice, to go to the second exile. And we heard what happened. They burned the temple. They destroy everything that they have, and they took everyone, young and old, to the Chaldeans, to the land of Babylon. And there they served two kings, Nabucodonosor and Baldassar, his son. And for 70 years, the chosen people of God did not have a place of worship. They never recognize themselves as a nation and because of that they cannot offer sacrifice to God and that's why in the responsorial psalm we read that our captives ask us to sing the hymns of Zion how can I sing the song of Zion my tongue will will come to my mouth close my mouth because I cannot sing the joyful song of Zion in a foreign land and that's why we say, how can I forget you, Jerusalem? Now I know, after I have lost what I have, how much I really appreciate what you used to be. And then we go in the Gospel today, and we find Jesus with Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus was a member of the Senate. He was a very bright man. Because even when they want to destroy Jesus, he gave them the advice of Gamaliel. If these people are coming from humanity, people are making themselves something, they will finish. But if they are called by God, they will not be able, we are not able to finish them, to destroy them. And so today we see Nicodemus who really have great love for Jesus. And he had great love for him because in him he saw that authority. He saw that genuinity. He saw that passion that he had for the people. And so, as he comes to, the, to Jesus by night, Jesus today said to him something very special. God so loved the world that he gave the best. He gave his son. And whoever believes in his son who brought the message at verbum caro factumet, and the word of God become flesh. He brought the message to us. Whoever believes in that message and lives by that message, he will be saved. Because Jesus did not come from the Father to condemn the world. If God want to condemn the world, he will not allow and will not, uh, he will not put Christ on the cross. He sent his son not to condemn it, but to save it. But there are people, because of their free will, who are not going to accept him. And that is the condemnation. The condemnation is not that Jesus come to condemn us. The condemnation is because we don't accept him who comes. And the word is this, that he who is light, who is truth, come to this world of darkness. And the world of darkness, because of the darkness of sin, did not want to come closer to the light, because their actions will be exposed. But those who come to the light, they will have the truth, and the truth will set them free. But I like to, con to uh, co concentrate on that second reading today. Paul is writing to the people of Ephesus. You know, Ephesus was one of the uh, people that St. Paul loved. In fact, he gave them one of his great men to be their bishop, Timothy. And we know that St. Paul today said, that God is rich in mercy. One of the great attributes of God is mercy. 
We think that because I sin, I deserve to go to hell. But God will not allow it unless I allow myself to go there. Because even when I say no, because of my limitation I have, God will always provide me with an occasion to come back to Him. And when I, pe when I petition Him with a contrite heart, not only He forgive me, but He let go of everything I have done. And that's what St. Paul is trying to say. But St. Paul also reminds us that not because we are so beautiful or so wonderful, the redemption did not come from your actions, from my actions. It comes from Him. So no one has to, the, uh, no one will boast that he is saved by his own merits. We are saved by the passion and death of Christ. And that's why God created us in the image of His Son. Many people do not understand this, but when God created Adam, He has in His mind his son who is going to take that same form of flesh and so in Adam he has his son and each one of us who participate in the human nature we are created by Christ and we are created by Christ so that we who have sinned now we have been redeemed and we are going to be restored from our sinfulness the enslavement of sin and become part of that heaven that God created for me and for all humanity. My dear people, this is why Jesus today said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world. Because God creates, and what he creates is good. He created by his own word, by one word, and the creation came to be. At creantum, creantum, nic, nilus that God created out of nothing and he created by only one word and that word that he created was his son who was with him at the creation and together with the love of the Holy Spirit that same word he sent it into the world so that he remind us of the love that he has for us because what he created he will not destroy but he conserves and that's why St. Paul said he was, we are created in the image of his Son. And now that we are created and we have sinned, that's why St. Paul said, when we were enemy to the cross, when we were very much enslavement to sin, at that very moment when we were enemies even to God because of our disobedience, God sent his Son. And he sent him to redeem us. And that's why he said he is full of richness. He is merciful. That's one of the greatest God, uh, gift that God, attitude that God has. The attribute of mercy. And that's why today the antiphone of the Mass begins, Rejoice Jerusalem. Letare Jerusalem. Why Letare? Because your people are coming back to you. King, da, uh, um, King Cyrus of Persia, who was elected, who was uh, who overcome the Chaldeans, is now going to be a, web, um, a vehicle in the hands of God to bring forth his people back to Palestine, back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. And he is telling them, "Go now, any one of the of the Hebrew descent, build your temple." And again, unite yourself as a people and offer to God sacrifice. And that same vision of that first reading is for us. We were slaves to sin. And now from our enslavement through the passion and death of Christ, we were redeemed. And now we gave the hope that we are going to go now because we are redeemed and become adopted children of the Eternal Father to our destination our heavenly Jerusalem and this is why the church today rejoice because we are rejoicing not because Christ died because nobody rejoiced over the death of Christ but we rejoice because his death was our redemption as we sing in that beautiful exalted I love that exalted because in that exalted we have really 
what we are celebrating at this very holy night. Kulpa Adam's kulpa, that means the fault of Adam was necessary for the incarnation and redemption that we have through Christ Jesus. It was that sin that brought Jesus to be our Redeemer on the wood of the cross. It was that sin for which Jesus came in this world to be the victim and the high priest on the hill of Calvary. And that's why the church today say rejoice because the days of our redemption that we are about to celebrate is here near. We are over half Lent already. And the question I put to you is what have we done during this season of Lent? Different to prepare to celebrate with great joy the celebration of the mystery of the Paschal mystery of Christ, the dying and rising of Christ. I hope that you already make a plan that you are going to go to confession because in the sacrament of penance we are, we die to sin. And from that absolution we rise with Christ again as we renew the baptismal vows to destroy evil from us and to receive God in our hearts as we, with joyful heart, celebrate his passion and death for the redemption of humanity. May we be ready to celebrate not only these few weeks coming, the passion and death and resurrection of Christ, but be ready to celebrate that Paschal mystery that God has prepared for us for all eternity, that the death and resurrection of Christ has earned for us as we say in the Eucharist prayer, we become co-heirs now of that, of that uh, enterprise that Christ has brought from us by his death and resurrection. And may we not only be prepared to celebrate this year Easter, but to celebrate forever the eternal Easter that God has prepared for us. We who love him, we who deny him, we who rejoice to be with him. So our rejoice that we anticipate now will be one day fulfilled in that heaven that is waiting for us. God bless.